Hey guys, this is Gene Garaspi for Mold 3D. Today, I'm going to show you my process of creating beautiful renders for my jewelry designs using KeyShot. KeyShot is a great program for creating images, for presenting your designs to clients, or to get a visualization for what your jewelry design will look like once it's manufactured. In order to get started, we'll need to export the file from my 3D modeling software. All right, we are at the stage now where we are ready to send this file over to KeyShot so we can do our rendering. What I'd like to do now is go through the steps of exporting it into our desktop so we can import it. So the first thing we need to do is just to select everything in our scene. And from here, we can go ahead and go to File, go to Export Selected. Then in your desktop, we can just simply type in the word render or whatever file name you want to use and just go ahead and hit enter. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and turn on KeyShot and we will continue from that lesson. Okay, we are back. And what we're going to do now is just simply go to our desktop and just drag in the Rhino file right over into the KeyShot's viewport. And from here, you'll see the prompt just simply hit the import button and it will open up the 3dm file from Rhino okay and there we have it from here we can just simply use our left uh, mouse button on uh, which gives you the ability to rotate you can simply hold the middle mouse button and you can do your pan and if you want to zoom in you just scroll up and down all right, so from here, I'm just going to look for a good angle so we can create this static rendering. Um, I'm going to get this thing to a little bit of a farther distance, just like this, and give a little more angle so you see more of the top side of this ring here. From here, I'm going to go into the library, and let's begin bringing in some materials. So we'll go in the library. Let me get this window open real quick. I'm going to look under gemstones first. And I'm kind of feeling I want to work with some uh, rubies here. So just left click on the ruby stone and just drag it right over your uh, stones like that. You're going to notice it's a little bit of a light color. So we're going to go back and tweak it uh, shortly. But first, let's go into our metal so we can give this thing some uh, metal around the ring. I'm going to go into the metal section here. I'm going to scroll down a bit to the precious section and let's play around with the gold. And from here, you can play with any material you want to work with. But for me, I'm going to stick with the regular 18 karat gold. Just left click and just drag it over the surface and you'll see that the gold has applied now. The only thing left to do now is to go into our environment tab. And you're going to see a bunch of HDR images here. You can work with uh, some three-point lighting here. If we scroll down to the bottom, you have some images you can play with. You have some light tent boxes that we could use. And the way that these work, you just simply click on any of these images and just drag it right over into the background. And it should apply as, as an environment, which is pretty cool. You can see which one works for you. Uh, we can drag on other ones like this. This gives it a little more of a natural light tent look. So these are one of my favorite ones to use. Could sort of work with this one. Doesn't seem too heavy in the shadows. It's a little too bright with this one. You know what? I'll take this one here. Perfect. And what we need to do now is uh, tweak the settings of the stones. I'm going to go and turn off the library real quick and turn on project. A few things we can do here, but just to quickly show you, we can actually go into the material section, double click on the Ruby material, and now you can start playing with transparency. And kick these up a bit or down. You notice that it's starting to turn a little more red. And from here you can turn on increase or decrease the refraction index. So if I yank this down, you'll see it gets a little bit darker. 
We pull this up, you see a little more of some reflectivity and refraction of the way the light passes through. Again, you gotta get a little good balance, but we do want it to be a little bit on the red side, so that's actually perfect. All right, so now that you've set up the actual stones to have a little bit of a solid, tight color to it, we can now go into the environment. Um, tons of things to play around here with. You can turn the environment around in your scene just so you can get the right amount of lighting. Oh, there we go. Just so you can get the thing to glow right around there. And from here, we can go into the color so we can turn off the environment and just stay with a regular color around our scene. We can go into the bottom here and just turn on the ground reflections. Just so you can see the reflection of the stone, which is kind of cool, uh, the ring actually. All right, so as soon as you have that set up, we can now go into the camera. We can slide down and look under depth of field. Notice that it's starting to blur out the entire image, but if you look down here, you can actually click on this little target here. And when you left click on any point of the actual surface, it actually sets a focus on it. So what I want to do is focus right on this area. So just simply left click right on uh, target space. And it's starting to focus here. What we want to do now is start to give some uh, blur around the outer edges and especially the bottom of the shank so we can give it some some realism. So if you look under f-stop, you can simply slide these. But I like to just type in my numerical value. So I'll highlight this number here and just type in uh, a really drastic number like 0.1 and look how it starts to really blur which is kind of cool but it looks like a little too heavy so let's change it up to 0.2 and let it do its thing if you just let if you just let it hang out you'll actually see that it can actually finish its entire image we can now go into the render section here and we can now play with what our output will come out to be. DPI is very important when you're saving a file, really cranks up the amount of space you're gonna use and the resolution as well. You can also play with presets to give you the image size. We can also play with the print size if you decide to print uh, for graphics or for print. Definitely name it and set the location. You can also use this folder here to pick a folder location. Uh, but most importantly, if you're doing a lot of compositing, JPEG won't give you alpha channels. So use these other file types. For example, if we click on TIFF, you will see that you have the ability to include alpha transparency. You can also use EXR if you decide to use uh, this file in After Effects. You can use the uh, PNG also with uh, transparencies. But for this case, we'll stay with JPEG. And uh, you just simply have to click the render button and you're good to go. All right, so I'm not gonna hit the render button because this image here is kind of what you will see when you render it. So and there we have it. I hope you learned some cool tool tips for my demo and thanks for watching.